Conceit is one of those qualities we all have, and it's a slippery friend. There are times when it's useful. There's that passage where a nun is teaching the nun that we practice to overcome conceit, and yet we have to use conceit in the practice. And the example he gives is when you hear that someone else has been able to put an end to suffering, has made it all the way to the goal. And you reflect, that person is a human being, I'm a human being. That person can do it, so can I. And to that extent, you need conceit on the practice. If you believe that you can't do the practice, or if it seems way beyond you, you end up giving up. You set your sights low. And as we all know, you never hit higher than you aim. So that, to that extent, conceit is helpful. But it has its fangs, and John Mahabur calls it the fangs of ignorance. When you have the conceit, well, this is going to be easy, and you get careless, complacent. But conceit has its other side as well. The Buddha talks about comparing yourself to other people, thinking that you're better than they are, or that you're equal to them, or that you're worse than them. All of this is conceit. In other words, the idea of, I am this, I am that, and it gets brought into every issue. And this is where it becomes, turns into fangs, where I am really good at everything, therefore I'm going to be good at this, and you get careless. Or I am not up to this, this is beyond me, and you give up. You make the practice harder than it has to be. So it's a fine line, realizing where conceit is going to be helpful and where it's going to be harmful. I mean, it's important to realize that this is going to be a hard path to follow. But it's also important that you don't think, well, it's going to be easy for me or it's going to be impossible for me. It's the me in there. That's the fangs. So try to put that aside as much as you can. Point out to yourself simply, this is what has to be done. Is it going to kill you? Well, no, then you can do it. That's what a John Fuang said to me one time. He asked me after a long day of work to sit up all night. This was very early on in my time with him, and I was dumb enough to say, oh, I don't think I can do that. He looked at me and said, well, is it going to kill you? Well, no. He said, then you can do it. This didn't mean that it wasn't going to be hard. It was hard. But after all, this is admittedly a hard practice. It goes against all of our inclinations. We like our greed. We like our anger sometimes. We like our delusion. And yet it's going to have to—all these things are going to have to be put aside, let go of, as we practice. But it's within human capability to do this. I mean, if you do die in the practice, it's a good way to die. It's better than dying without having accomplished anything or dying doing something really stupid. So try to think in those terms. Realize that even though it's hard, this is part of being a good friend to yourself. One of the definitions of a good friend is someone who is able to give what is hard to give, do what is hard to do, endure what is hard to endure. If you meet a friend like that who's willing to give things that normally would be difficult to give, associate with that friend. Same with someone who's able to do what is hard to do and endure what is hard to endure. These are the people you really want as your friends. And so you want to be able to make yourself your own best friend. 
ask yourself, what is hard for you to give? That's actually a burden for you. Forgiveness is one thing. It's funny how sometimes it's easy to give material things, but forgiveness, which is totally free, becomes something very hard to give. Just go down the list of the people in your life that you find it hard to forgive and try it. Forgive them. Try not to carry a grudge. And you find that that's a really good gift to give to yourself. Do what is hard to do. Meditate longer than you might want to. Medi do walking meditation longer than you might want to. Put more effort into the practice than you want to. And you find that you benefit. This ties in with enduring what's hard to endure. Pain is hard to endure. Other people's dislike is hard to endure. Well, learn to endure it. It's not going to kill you. And this doesn't mean that you sit there and grit your teeth. Learn to use your wisdom. As a John Shaw once said, if you could gain awakening simply by endurance, chickens would have endured gained awakening a long time ago. They can sit really long. You have to learn to use your wisdom. When something seems burdensome, why is it burdening you? Exactly what is it placing a burden on in you? And why do you want to identify with what's being burdened? And a good way to learn this is to force yourself into situations where you've got to face this difficulty face on. It's there. It's a problem. And try to use your ingenuity to get around it. It's when you're cornered that you realize that you've got to find a way out. So learn to be your own best friend. It's not a matter of being pessimistic or optimistic. It's a matter of learning to be heedful. Heedful is an interesting com combination. On the one hand, you've got to have the confidence that your actions do make a difference. So heedfulness is not negative, it's not pessimistic. On the other hand, you realize that there are dangers out there. Dangers inside as well. There are difficulties that you've got to work with. You respect those difficulties, but you don't let yourself get overwhelmed by them. In other words, you've got to let that element of conceit out of your grasp. Don't bring yourself into what you're doing. Don't bring I can do this really easily, or I can't do this at all. Just put them aside and see what you can do. And even if things don't work out well the first time, well, try again, try again, try again. This is how people grow. One of a John Fuang's terms of criticism was someone who's good even before he's tried something. In other words, you've got it all figured out. It's going to be no problem at all. He didn't trust people like that. At the same time, he found out that you were getting very pessimistic about your ability to practice. He didn't want you to stay there either. Being overly optimistic, overly pessimistic were, as far as he was, he was concerned, really unskillful ways of approaching the path. Admit that it's difficult, but do what you can, and learn to develop your discernment. Watch out for those fangs of ignorance. The I am this, or I am that, or I'm not used to this, I can't stand this, I'm, this is hard for me. 
drop the meat, then it gets a lot easier. So even though it may be hard, you can do it. The things that are hard to give, you can give. The things that are hard to do, you can do. The things that are hard to endure, you find that you can endure. It may not be easy the first time. You may find yourself running into a brick wall. But even brick walls can be battered down. They have their cracks. There are ways around them, under them, over them. So learn the proper use of conceit, the confidence that, yes, you can do this. Other people can do it. It's something human beings have done. You're a human being. You can do it, too. Once you've got that amount of conviction, okay, drop the you, drop the me, the I. And then set to work. That right there makes it a lot easier. This way you become your own best friend.